I was either stranded in here, alone, with this likely predator, or stranded out there in the middle of a lockdown. Hello, and welcome to all Dainty Creepypasta. Horror stories cooked to perfection with a splash of red sauce. My name is CZ, and I will be your server this episode. Morning classes with horrible teachers are hard enough to get through without an insane clown on the loose in the school. Today's story takes us through the worst day of school. Let's dig right in. I heard he has a thing going on with that girl, Gina Wendelvin. She half whispered. We were sitting in the back of second period science, as my best friend Lexi spilled the tea on the latest rumors about Mr. Markham, the history teacher slash volleyball coach, who's been the subject of some pretty messed up rumors as of late. Leslie Franklin was supposedly upstairs getting something from her locker after practice one night, and I saw Gina coming out from a private tutoring session with Mr. Markham. Ew! Why the hell would Gina even want to? Or she must really need an A in US history. That's so gross. Ew, 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 no. He's old. From what I heard, she wouldn't be the first. What she was telling me was, sadly, probably true. The rumors about Mr. Markham had swirled into a frenzy since the winter break incident, when he had supposedly given Kim Ichikawa a ride home, after the last volleyball practice, while her parents were gone. The bell rang. Do you think it's true, though? Lexi asked me, as I dropped off my science textbook in my locker, exchanging it for my US history book. I don't know. Why don't you ask him? I told her, mockingly. We both had Mr. Markham next period together. I bet you could find out, Ivana. I think he likes you. Ew. No. And, once again, ew! He does call on you a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Nope. Don't care. Darn it! <sighs> Not again. The locker had snagged a bit of the skirt I was wearing, and it was pinched inside my locker door. Come on, we're gonna be late. You could be like a school hero. Expose him for what he really is and get him fired. We were sitting in Mr. Markham's class now, and I didn't want to have this discussion with him in the room. She was right, though. Of the four students he had randomly called on this lesson, three of them were me. Lexi, can we please have this discussion some other- Ivana, you're not talking during my lecture now, are you? My heart skipped a beat. Had he overheard us talking about him? If you have something to say about District Columbia versus Heller, why don't you just share it with the class? No, I don't, sir. He paused and stared at me a moment before continuing his lesson. Really? In front of the whole class? He must really be getting cocky. Thanks a lot, I muttered to Lexi. Ivana, see me after the bell. The whole class oohed at this, and I rolled my eyes. Great. The last thing I wanted was to be one-on-one -on -one with the biggest creep teacher in the school. When class let out, Lexi told me she'd wait for me in the hall. Mr. Markham waited for the whole class to empty out, then closed the door. I remained at my desk. He didn't say anything at first. He took his time, walking over and sitting on the desk directly in front of me. He stared at me for a moment, then <sighs> sighed as if he were still contemplating whether or not he was going to punish me. The silence was uncomfortable. Then he went into his rant about how he was supposedly concerned with my performance lately, how it was reflected by behavior in class. It was all bull. He wouldn't shut up, though. He was going to make me late for my next class at this point. I saw Lexi waiting outside the door. I wanted to signal her to just go on without me, but her back was turned. This is exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about. Are you even paying attention? I just... He interrupted me. He started asking me all these questions. Is there something going on with my life? Is there something wrong at home? The passing period ended, but he told me he'd write me a pass to my next class. Then things started getting really 
weird. He started asking personal questions. If there's something else distracting me, if I had a boyfriend, I needed to get out of here. I made up some story about being overwhelmed by my schoolwork. I don't know why I thought that would get him to let me go, but I think it had the opposite effect. So I froze for a moment, then stood up out of my chair. He gets to his feet as well with a scary look in his eyes. Before it could escalate any further, an announcement comes over the intercom. Attention, attention. All classes are hereby suspended into lockdown. All classes are hereby suspended into lockdown. It took probably about 15 seconds for the reality of the situation to sink in. I was either stranded in here, alone, with this likely predator, or stranded out there, alone, in the middle of a lockdown. Mr. Markham told me to get against the wall near the door as he turned off the lights. He came and sat right next to me on the floor, and comfortably so. My head was spinning out of control. That's when I realized the door. Nobody had locked the door. I looked to the door and realized there was someone standing right on the other side of it. Not daring to budge or make a sound, I tried to conceal my breathing, taking slow, deep, breaths. The footsteps stopped in front of the door. I was shaking, but the room was quiet. Whoever was standing out there had tried to get in. The door was already locked. I didn't know if I should be relieved to be safe or outraged that Mr. Markham had locked me into our conversation after class. The intruder continued to stand outside the door. Then, suddenly, the entire room seemed to shake as the guy threw his body against the door. He tried this a second time before the sound of a girl screaming could be heard from down the hall. What happened next took the horrors I had experienced up to that point and twisted them into something ten times more terrifying. The guy on the other side of the door started blowing this clown horn over and over. The sound drifted away from our door and toward the screaming girl who continued to shriek and call for help. I looked to Mr. Markham as if to suggest he should go out there and try to help this girl. He avoided my eye contact. <laughs> Freaking coward. <laughs> All at once, the screaming and the clown horn stopped at the sound of a thud. I gasped, because the severity of the situation had hit me. This wasn't just another drill. This is the real thing. What schools all across the country practice lockdowns for was this. This person, this intruder with the clown horn, wasn't just pulling some kind of joke. He was dangerous. My mind went to a dark place, a worst possible scenario, and it hit me hard. My eyes started to blur with tears. I buried my head in my hands, just trying to focus on taking deep breaths. Then, I felt a cold pair of hands on my shoulders, and they started to caress me. <laughs> that mother f***ing pig. He was using this horrible situation to his advantage. He was trying to take advantage of me at my most vulnerable moment. And maybe the worst part was that I was trapped. I couldn't even make a sound without putting my own life in danger. At this point, I didn't care anymore. I didn't care about the lockdown, the intruder, any of it. I needed to get out of this room now. 
I pulled away from his grip and ran to the door, leaving him alarmed, but he wasn't quick enough to stop me. I unlocked it and slipped out into the empty hallway. I didn't really have much of a plan other than to hide. I looked left. Further down the hall, a girl was lying unconscious on the floor, with a guy in a black and white clown suit standing over her. He didn't seem to have noticed me. I looked to the right. An empty hallway, rows of lockers, and one trash can. I didn't know if this would work, but I didn't really have another option. I quietly ran to my right, jumped, and landed in the trash can, trying to make as little noise as possible. Lucky for me, the can was mostly empty, so I was able to crouch down and not be seen poking out the top. It was quiet for a moment. Then... The clown horn started repeatedly, honking, again. It was gradually getting louder, which meant the clown was headed in my direction. My hiding spot was about to be tested. The clown yanked the rim of the garbage can and sent me tumbling out onto the floor. A pair of big, shiny, obsidian black eyes were staring down as the clown stood over me with a disgusting grin. It was the face of an old-style circus clown. He must have been wearing blackout contacts or something, and his face was completely greased down in white makeup, except for his lips and the dots on his cheeks, both of which were painted black. In fact, his entire outfit was black and white, making him look like he had stepped out of a black and white photograph and into reality. The only part that did look more cartoonish was how very bloodthirsty his grin was. I was lying on my back on the floor where I had been dumped out of the garbage can as this horrifying thing reached down for me. I only knew of one thing left to do. As hard as I could, I kicked my foot up into his balls. But. To my shock and horror, this attack did nothing to him. The clown didn't even flinch. It seemed to cause him no pain whatsoever. I felt his silk gloves close around my neck as he pinned me to the ground. I tried to scream, but I felt my throat close up, and I knew it would do me no good anyway. All I could do was look up at this circus-drawn nightmare and... And there was something else. Just above my head was someone's overstuffed locker. It wasn't fully closed. The bottom of the door was pushed open by some object that didn't quite fit inside, but it looked like the owner had tried to cram it shut anyhow. I reached for the locker door and yanked at it. It gave a little bit, but it was stuck. I was starting to black out. If I could just pull it free. I gave it a hard tug and pulled on it. My vision was fading almost entirely black now. I maybe only realized it had worked when I heard the familiar sound of the locker flying open, and it crashed against the clown's head, knocking it backwards and off of me. An unbelievable amount of junk came pouring out. Whatever was in there must have been heavy because it had really knocked the clown hard in the head, which was good because I also needed a moment to come to. I had one more idea. If this didn't work, I was done for. As fast as I could, I took all the junk out of the locker and hurled it at the clown. Textbooks, an instrument case, a pair of shoes, anything I could find. The clown seemed woozy and it got back to its feet and regained its bearings just as I threw my last piece of ammo. It seemed like none of the junk in that locker was big enough to hurt the clown, which didn't seem to even feel or notice anything other than the blow to its head. But hurting it? wasn't my plan. I had completely emptied out the locker. This was it. Do or die. I stepped back into the locker as the clown, with a twisted face of anger and frustration, charged at me as I pulled the door shut as much as possible without pinching my hand. Everything went black as I shut myself into the locker, and the furious clown slammed into the door, effectively locking me in. There was no scream or roar of frustration, just the echoey reverberation of the clown crashing up against the metal door. 
He fumbled with the handle, shortly before realizing that it was no good. Then I heard something move in the distance, and the clown started beeping its horn once again and heading off to some other part of the school. I stayed safe in that locker for hours, until the school was cleared and the principal used his master key to let me out. The light hurt my eyes as I collapsed onto the hallway floor. I had been limited to the tiny amount of light that poured in through three thin slots on the locker door. The principal gave me a little nod and told me, good thinking, or something along those lines, before turning and attending to the more important matters at hand. The hallway was now filled with police officers, school administrators, news reporters, photographers, and... Wait, what were Lexi's parents doing here? My best friend's dad was standing maybe 15 feet down the hall, with his arm around her mom, who was sobbing and dabbing at her eyes as the commotion flowed around them like a rock cutting through a stream. What? What had happened? I looked around some more and realized they weren't the only ones. It looked like there were a few more sets of parents in tears scattered around the hallway here and there. There were no other students around. I guess the rest of the day's classes had canceled. Before I got up from off the floor where I had fallen out of the locker, I noticed a little ripped piece of fabric fall on the ground right where I fell. It looked like it had been a piece of the clown's neck ruffle that had been caught in the closing locker door and probably ripped off when it tried to escape. There was text on it. It said, Ipsy and Parks. The rest was torn off and I couldn't read it. A bright flash filled the room. Reporters were taking pictures of Mr. Markham, but to my surprise, he wasn't being handcuffed or interrogated by angry parents. A news anchor wearing a tie and holding a microphone started to praise him, going on about this one brave teacher whose heroics may have saved the lives of countless students. Then he started going into this phony story about how he immediately ran out to fight off the clown and protect the students the moment the lockdown was called. <laughs> yeah, right. You've got to be kidding me. I was too drained to care, though. I was crammed into a locker with no food and not a big slot for air, and I really felt like I was going to black out again. I took a seat back down on the floor and closed my eyes for a minute. Mr. Markham finished up his interview, and the reporter wrapped up the story. This is the second clown attack our nation has seen this week after two students at a school in Garden Coast just yesterday were fortunately unharmed during a lockdown incident. For CZN News 23, I'm Poppy Harlow. I looked around at the devastation surrounding me. The incident was obviously over, but I still felt this huge pit in my stomach, as if nothing had been resolved. Two clown attacks in one week? Sure, the other school was probably nowhere near here, but still. All the reporters and police officers seemed to just be going about their business, as if this were just a part of their routine or something. Where was the urgency? Why wasn't anyone doing anything about this? For a moment, I got really angry, but then the anger was just replaced with pain. My heart slowly broke as I sat there. I couldn't get Lexi's mom's face out of my head. Would I ever see Lexi again? Would school ever be the same? I'm pretty sure I knew the answer to both questions when my parents arrived to pick me up. Both of their eyes were swollen and red. Thanks for listening to All Dainty Creepypasta. Your total comes out to $23, but if you like this video right now, I'll waive that fee and give you everything you just listened to absolutely free. Big thanks to Spirit Voices for narrating this episode. Definitely go check out her channel. Other guest narrators include Penny Tails Up and Rustic B. I highly recommend you check out their channels. Click the playlist on the left to check out every other Creepy Clown School Lockdown incident, and remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week. Ring the death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.